Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and in this video uh, we're going to be learning how to create this floating button with HTML and CSS. Um, so we can see here we have this floating button on the bottom right corner of the web page. If I was to scroll down, it obviously stays in place. So we're going to create this button right here in this video. Okay, um, so um, it can be used either as a link or um, some sort of general purpose button um, which you can then use JavaScript to obviously perform some sort of action. Um, so um, the video is going to be focused on actually uh, creating the button itself with HTML and CSS only. Okay, so um, let's go inside the blank HTML page right here um, just with the dummy text and actually create this button. Okay, so just, be, uh, just bear in mind that I'm also going to be using um, Google's material icons to actually create um, or you know insert the icon inside the button itself um, so be sure to just head over to this URL and um, include this link in the head of your HTML page all right um, so let's go inside the text editor and um, just uh, have a go at editing this and of course creating the button all right so let's begin with the HTML so below the h1 tag let's create um, uh, for now an anchor so an a tag so we're going to say a and it's giving and it's uh, going to be an href to google.com so we can say google.com um, as I said we'll be looking at creating um, the same thing but with a button instead of a link but it all works the same way um, so we can also give it a class of material icons class material icons and that's going to activate the um, the uh, the uh, icon library and inside here we're going to say add so basically I've included the Google material icons in the head of my page and by having this class here and finally um, the actual name of the icon uh, it's going to insert the plus symbol inside the anchor tag alright so now I can just save this and refresh and we can see we have this result right here once it loads up I think I might have um, no that's fine Let's try again. All right, so right now, it doesn't look like Google icons are loading, but um, we'll just see how we go. There we are. So we have this icon right here. Um, so let's go ahead now and actually uh, add some CSS to the icon or to the actual uh, link or button and make it look a bit nicer. So back inside here, let's go inside the CSS and target um, a class called floating BTN. Alright, so let's just add this class to the class list of the um, anchor tag. Okay, cool. So let's first um, let's first give it a width and a height and a background color. So we can say width of 80px, a height of the same. That way it's going to be a perfect circle, and a background color of black. Now I'm also going to go ahead here and set the display to be flex. The reason for a flex box in this case is to um, vertically and horizontally align the icon in the center. So I can now save this and refresh and we get this result right here. Alright, so um, let's now uh, turn this into a circle and um, also add some uh, color to the text. So we can go back inside here and set the border radius, the uh, border radius to be uh, 50%. That'll make sure it's a perfect circle. Um, let's change the color of the text to be white. And let's give it a font size of 40px. So I like setting the font size to be half the amount of the width and height. So I can now save this and refresh and we get this result right here. Um, let's now uh, center the plus. So back inside here, let's go under the display effects and set the align items uh, rule to be center and the same goes for justify content so having these both as being center means um, the text or the icon in this case is going to be uh, centered horizontally and vertically we can also set the text decoration to be none and that will of course remove the underline that comes standard with an anchor tag so I can now save this and refresh let me get this result right here so it's definitely looking a lot better um, I'm also just going to change the background color of this to be um, the decode green so back inside here let's change the background to be uh, 009879 okay cool so 
We can also add a box shadow just to add some uh, more effects to the icon or to the button so we can say uh, box shadow as being uh, 2px, 2px, 5px and then RGBA let's make it a 25% opaque black alright so I can now save this and refresh and we have the, um, the button styled up so next we're going to uh, position it to the bottom right corner so to do this we're going to use three CSS rules the first one's going to be position and this will be fixed so fixed means it's going to basically float on top of everything else All right. And now we can set the right to be 20px and the bottom to also be 20px. So this is going to allow the button to be, um, you know, uh, 20px from the right and 20px from the bottom of the page. Okay, so I can save this and refresh. And of course, we get this right here. Perfect. Okay, so now if I also scroll down, it stays in place. Okay, so uh, one more thing to do is uh, to create um, the effect of the background color changing when you press on the link. Okay, um, so back inside here, let's just first add the transition uh, CSS rule to the floating button and say background and then 0.25 seconds. So now the background color is going to transition um, for a total time of uh, a quarter of a second when we change the background color. So down here, we can say floating button when it gets the active pseudo class, we're going to change the background to be a darker color. So uh, we can say 007D63. So now this means when we actually click on the, um, on the icon or on the button, um, it's going to trigger the active pseudo class and then change the background color with a nice transition. So I can save this and refresh and then click on the button and hold down. We can see the color actually changes. Okay, cool. So um, that is uh, how you do it with a link. So if you want to make this extend to be, uh, you know, to uh, support a standard button, then you got to add three more properties. So let's go back down here and get rid of this link and instead make this a button tag. All right. We can reuse all of these CSS styles, but um, if we see this now, it looks like this. So we have a few problems here. Um, first off, we don't have um, the actual cursor that hovers over, you know, when you hover over it, it doesn't change the cursor. Um, second, the border looks a bit funny. And third, when you click on the button, you get this outline. So this outline is used for accessibility purposes, but you may want to actually remove the blue border. Okay, so back inside the CSS, let's fix those problems. So let's just say here for a button, we're going to remove the outline, we're going to set the border to be none, and we're going to set the cursor to be pointer um, when you hover over it. So I can save this and refresh, and we get our final result. So um, I can click on this button, boom. Um, obviously, it does nothing, but you can then, you know, bind this button to do things uh, within your JavaScript, all right? And that is how you can make a floating button with HTML and CSS. Thanks for watching, and I will see you later.